morning class 11th now today the second lesson of snapshot i am going to take for 11th class for you and this is address address by marga minko and in this one what is told let me just tell you actually this story tells the human behavior that changes according to situation some people become very much greedy and some people in adverse condition becomes panic stricken and they take any decision without thinking that what could be its consequences in the future it is human nature a person does whatever he feels right but what will be its effect we will come to know later on but human nature it also changes according to the situation this is the beautiful lesson to understand that one how mrs dorling who became greedy when she came to when when uh, mrs s and uh, and her daughter did not return and there was uh, no message from them she took it for granted and she kept her things back okay now we are going to start the lesson this story is a poignant account of a daughter who goes in search of her mother's belongings after the war in holland when she finds them the objects evoke memories of her earlier life however she decides to leave them all behind and dissolves to move on now here children i don't think any difficult word is there yes that this object evokes evokes means uh, like rises Uh, or uh, that is uh, such things uh, come to in the person's mind over there uh, of course it happens any gift given to any person uh, or uh, like we keep that one that person keeps that thing nicely uh, like that is uh, it means uh, protectively uh, somewhere hiding leave and also keeps that very thing but once that is uh, because a uh, lot of it means a uh, lot of emotions are there and the bonding is there but once that bonding is not there and a person feels himself cut off from those emotions then the value of that thing goes away it means the person throws that thing away or gives to someone else like this because the feelings or the emotions are not there in this story we are going to read poignant account means very touching account of a daughter who goes in search of her mother's belongings after the war it is about the second world war when the jews were living in the holland but when the german took over then that is their condition became very difficult then many of them they left the place and by that time like who were well settled there they left their things in the neighborhood with the hope that when the war would be over they would come back and the and the neighborhood friends also promised they would that giving the things back but when the daughter who was uh, away in the city when she comes to see that she, once she remember her remembers her mother a lot and she comes to the village to look at those things at the given address then what she finds that is she is that is that lady even refuses to recognize her and then what she thinks she decides to leave them all behind and resolves and makes the mind over there to move on now children lesson do you still know me i asked the woman looked at me searchingly she had opened the door a chink i came closer and stood on the top no i don't know you i am mrs s's daughter she held her hand on the door as though she wanted to prevent it opening any further her face gave absolutely no sign of recognition she kept staring at me in silence children i is the narrator is the daughter of mrs s that is like here when she came to the given address and she rang the bell and that lady didn't open the door properly rather she opened she put a chink chink means you will just see a chain is there then they put the chain so that the door will be uh, would be opened half only so that she could see the person who is outside or something some people have eye hole in their doors now that is they had they put uh, the chain was there and the chink was there and she looked from there like then she asked it means the narrator do you still know me the woman looked at me searchingly it means she was trying to understand that who that person could be that who was standing at her doorstep 
but she refused refused that she didn't uh, she did, she couldn't recognize because it was a long time five years were there and five years is a long time so she refuses and even also what she feels over there that uh, she did not have any sign of recognition it means she was totally blank at that time otherwise when we just look at a person and we recognize that a smile is there somewhat uh, that is uh, face expression changes but that time that is it means she realized that person couldn't recognize she only kept staring at her in silence perhaps i was mistaken i thought perhaps it isn't her i had seen her only once fleetingly and that was years ago it was most probably that i had rung the wrong bell the woman let go the door Uh, let go of the door and sto- and stepped to the side she was wearing my mother's green knitted cardigan the wooden buttons were rather pale from washing she saw that i was looking at the cardigan and half hid herself again behind the door but i knew now that i was right now perhaps i was mistaken then she thought the narrator thought maybe she reached the wrong address and she rang the wrong bell but uh, what happened over there because she had seen her once only and that is fleetingly fleetingly means uh, just like that only if somebody is making her making it is introducing someone over there and we are looking at the person but after 5 years the same thing won't remain in the mind that much so she thought that she might have uh, rung the wrong bell then the woman let go the door and then it means she moved us aside uh, that is it means uh, like there and what did she notice over there that the lady was putting on the green knitted cardigan and that was her mother's it means what it means she was at the right address the wooden buttons were rather pale from washing and the wooden buttons that is like the, there uh, on the cardigan that one they had turned pale because regular washing must be going on yes like she saw that i was looking at the cardigan and half hid herself again behind the door when she saw that uh, then that is the narrator was uh, staring at her uh, looking at uh, staring at her cardigan then she tried to hide herself behind the door but i knew now that i was right but she had understood now that she was right and the lady had recognized her only she was acting that as if she was not recognizing her and then she asked even also the narrator after that well you knew my mother that is that is it means if she uh, still remember her mother have you come back said the woman then the woman said if if they were back i thought that no one had come back then it means she was what she was expecting that after 5 years that nobody would be back and the things whatever her mother had kept with her would be hers now only me the narrator said it means this much communication to took place now this communication was telling that the lady could recognize uh, and that is an even the narrator came to know that she was on the right address but what happened next let us see a door opened and closed the passage behind her it means she did not open the door still she didn't ask her to come inside even after the recognition and she closed the door and then she opened the passage a uh, passage a window curtain that is we can just say a musty smell emerged and when she opened that one what did that is the narrator felt over there that a musty smell musty smell a thing that was closed for a long time and opened all of a sudden and that a smell a stale smell comes over there stinking a bit is stinking and the stale air is there it means enclosed air now i'm using the word stale air i am using the word uh, that is stinking stinking means smelling but here more than that it is stale it means closed for a long time i regret i cannot do anything for you and she said that is from there that let her go away because she won't be able to help her at all i have come here especially on the train i wanted to talk to you for a moment even the narrator told over there that she had come from very far by train and she wanted for a minute it means she wanted to talk to her it is not convenient for me for me now said the woman i don't see you another time besides this one she refused at all she told that she did, she didn't have time and it won't be easy for her convenient easy for her at that time to talk to her and she didn't want to see her again i can't see you another time means she didn't want to see her again she noted uh, that is 
yes she nodded and cautiously closed the door as though no one inside the house should be disturbed and after that one she she it means she bent down she nodded and then afterwards very carefully she closed the door as if she did not want that whosoever is inside they should come to know that with that with whom she was talking i stood there i was on the step the curtain in front of the bay window moved i stood there i stood where i was on the step it means she stood there and the curtain in front of the bay window moved it means there was a movement there someone stared at me and would then have asked what i wanted someone stared it means she felt that is the narrator felt as if someone was there that is and looked at her uh, try to it means understand who that person was and asked over there and then then what she wanted it means the person was asking looked outside that there was someone and then the person asked that lady that is who that person was and what did he want over there or what did she want over there then she said over there nothing the woman would have said it was nothing the woman then she must have said in such a way that there was no one over there and did not want anything okay i looked at the name plate again darling it said in black letters on white enamel on the jam a bit higher the number number 46 it was written address was written when she was out then she looked at the outer wall and the door carefully and what did she see that whether she was let to confirm her again it was written over there that is darling it was written it means that lady's name was written over there in the black letters means with the black paint that is in black letters on white enamel enamel means paint paint was white and the letters were black and it was a bit higher side it means on the door it was written and it was written the house number 46 it means she was on the right address now children here as i walked slowly back to the station i thought about my mother who had given me the address years ago it had been in the first half of the war i was home for a few days and it struck me immediately that something or other about the room had had changed now here as i, wo- I walked slowly back to the station now what happens like there were memories where my her mother uh, used to live there used to stay there and uh, though she was working in the city but during holidays she would come she used to come to meet her mother and now when she was back to the station then all the memories on the screen of her mind started becoming clear one by one what she was remembering now that that is like here that it means the moment she was just remembering when she met her mother and she introduced her to mrs dorling what was the condition and how did she come to know that things were vanishing from the rooms i thought about my mother who had given me the address years ago it had been this is the situation when she had given it had been in the first half of the war it means it is the second world war but it was the first half it means 19 uh, you will just see it started 1939 and it was over in 1945 it means first half means within uh, one or two years we can just say that is that is that time that one i was i was home for a few days and it struck me immediately that something or other about the rooms had changed it means when she was at home and she came out for like over the holidays to stay over there with her mother and within few days she started understanding that from the rooms the things were vanishing about the rooms had changed something or the other it means she understood that one that the things were vanishing i missed various things my mother was surprised i should have noticed so quickly when she asked her mother the, her mother was just saying and now it means she uh, could come to know that thing very late that that is rather she supposed to understand that one beforehand only then then she told me about mrs dorling i had never heard of her but separate but apparently she was an old acquaintance of my mother whom she hadn't seen for years she had suddenly returned up and renewed their contract since contact her since then she had come regularly like here like then her mother told about mrs dorling and she told over there uh, that is the lady used to come to their house and to whom she was giving 
and she like the narrator was thinking i had never heard of her but apparently she was an old acquaintance then she told that she her mother had never told her about mrs dorling but the, her mother told at that time that she was the old known person uh, to her that is acquaintance means known person familiar person but she hadn't uh, met her uh, for for uh, many years uh, she had suddenly turned up and renewed their contact she had suddenly turned up and she came up over there and renewed their contact since then she had come regularly and since that time she had been coming regularly every time she leaves here she takes something home with her said my mother she took all the tables silver go silver in one go and then the antique plates that hung there and what she would do over there every time her mother told her every time she was coming there then she was taking from her house that is something home that it means from there and she took all that like what are the things she was telling now all the silver that is a table silver in one go that is the cutlery cutlery means forks knives and the spoons and then the antique plates and the beautiful plates decorative ones which the generally people put on the walls for the decoration that hung there she had trouble lugging those large vases and even she was what she was facing over there lugging those large vases means very big vases were there vases when what we keep the flowers and other things the corners even we keep over there though it was very difficult for her to take but she took them out, away and i am worried she got she got a kirk in her bag from the crockery and that is like i she like here even she was worried over there that is it means how much heavy those vases were if she would take them even by train or by something from uh, that is from the narrator's mother's place to her place it means she would get pain in her back my mother shook her head pityingly even she was shaking her head it means she was telling but she was shaking her head with the pity over there as if she was helpless that she won't be able to keep all those things i would never have dared ask her and that is the narrator is telling she never asked about all those things to her she suggested it to me she suggested it to me me herself she even insisted she wanted to save all my things children i would never have dared ask her it means the narrator's mother never dared to ask where she was taking them only she suggested to that she suggested that one to the narrator what she was that one that she wanted to save all my nice things only she told her over there let her not be worried when she would be back she would get her things let her not ask where she was keeping that one there so she was just the mother told the narrator that she was she was keeping her things safe she wanted to save all my nice things it means she wanted to keep them safe if we have to leave here we shall lose everything she says because these jews they had to run away from there because of uh, to save their lives so she was telling if all of a sudden they had to leave the place then at that time they had to leave the things over there and she would lose them and she liked them and she loved her things because those were all beautiful and very costly have you agreed with her that she should keep everything i asked then narrator asked her do you think do you agree your mind was telling that one that she would keep the things safe for you and she would return the things back to her as if that's necessary my mother cried means her mother shouted that it is not necessary to ask someone if the person was taking care of the things whether the things would be uh, of course the things would be safe it was taken for granted her mother had taken those that thing that point for granted it would simply be an insult to talk like that then mother told that she didn't dare to ask like that and it would be an insult of a person who was helping her and think about the risk she is running each time she goes out of our door with a full suitcase and you or bag and she was telling the narrator then she was asking about whether the things would be safe or not but uh, let her think but she should think about that one that how much risk she was taking of taking the things out because each time when she was uh, going out with full suitcase then anybody might doubt anybody might question police might uh, check her or other things it mean she was facing a lot of risk 
in spite of that one she was helping them so she didn't dare to ask all that it means she did not want even the daughter to ask her question regarding that one according to her her mother was doing right right and uh, she was just thinking mrs dorling would keep the things uh, it means at a place safe or that much she told now still the narrator didn't meet her face to face children this is part 1 i'm stopping it here you should read nicely you should try to understand the things over there okay take care children and revise